this is Tamara from Ooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the super easy non-slip pom-pom rug. You'll find the free pattern and links to all the supplies you need at the link in the description, which takes you back to Moogly with the written pattern, and like I said, everything else. For this pattern, I used Red Heart Pompadoodle yarn and also a little bit of Red Heart Super Saver Ombre, although the use of the ombre is optional. I also used a G hook, this one is by Brittany, and the secret ingredient that makes it non slip some non slip rug padding. You can buy this at most major big box stores and order it online. I have an Amazon link again out in the tutorial, so you can follow the link in the description for that. I also have laid out several different color matchups here. If you did want to use the Super Saver Ombre, which is just used for edging on the rug, I paired, let's see, this is this beautiful teal color with the quirky colorway of the Pompadoodle. In the original rug, which I'll show you here in a minute, I used the Thunder with the Anthracite sort of gray colorway here. You could also match up the blues. Here's the pink and the coral up at the top. So you can really have some fun with this rug. Now I will show you the one I made and then I'll show you how I made it. Okay, so here we have the finished super easy non-slip pom-pom rug, and it's a little bit big to fit it all on camera, so here is a picture of it finished in my office. Okay, so back to the one on the table. Here you can see how great and squishy it is with all these pom-poms, and you can also see that it's been worked into the non-slip padding down here. I started in the center and worked my way out in a spiral, but the thing about this pattern is honestly, it doesn't have to be a circle. It can be any shape. You can just move the yarn however it is to fit your shape. Let me show you what I mean. Here is the underside of the rug, and this is the side we'll actually be working our stitches from. So we pull the pom-poms up to the bottom, or to the top really, and then work from the bottom to make our stitches, which are just slip stitches. Then after working all the way around with the pom-poms, that's when I came in from the right side here, worked that super saver just right around the edge to give a little finished edge to our rug. Most of the time, let me kind of push it up on the table here, so you can see most of the time it doesn't show, but once in a while you've got just a little bit of a peak there, so it's just nice to finish that off. I could have just trimmed the rug padding a little bit closer to that last row, but I didn't want to risk it ripping over time. So with that little row of single crochet around the edge there, it just secured our rug pad a little bit better. So that's how it looks when it's all done. Let me show you again here a little bit better look at the bottom of the rug. There we go. So you can see, I just started right at the beginning in the center there and worked out in a spiral. But if I wanted to, I could have worked back and forth in rows if I were making a square rug or a rectangle, or just really go in any direction to fit whatever shape rug you wanna make. Um, really, the sky's the limit. So the big key here was I just kept these lines about an inch apart so that the pom-poms would fill in and wouldn't be too far apart and show, but wouldn't be too squished together. So that was basically it. Now I'll show you how I actually made those stitches. Okay, now wait, before we begin our stitching, we first need to prepare our rug pad. I almost skipped that step, but it's an important first step. Now, when you purchase these rug pads, they usually come in some sort of rectangle. Um, that's the kind I've usually seen anyway. So if you want to cut it to the size you want, you can go ahead and do that. It just cuts easily with regular scissors. If you wanna cut it to a circle, of course, you'll need to cut that first. And I like to cut it before I start crocheting because then I can use that as a little bit of a guide. So I wanted to show you really quickly how I made a nice perfect circle using my rug pad. Of course, I started with the full-sized piece and here I just have a small scrap so you can see how it fits on camera. But like I said, mine came in a rectangle and I wanted to make a circle. So I started by folding it this way to make more of a square shape. And when I fold it again like this, I know that this right here is all going to be the excess. I'm not going to want to use any of this in my circle. This is as far as my edges can go. Now I know that this is the point of my circle because I've done those two folds. Let me do those again. I take my rectangle, I can fold it down here so I know that this section will be a square. If I fold it again, I know that this will be the center of my circle. So to make my circle the easy way without having to do a bunch of measuring, I literally tied a string, this was some Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie, to a Sharpie. And then what you can do, and this is a little sewing trick, is you can hold the string at the point, the center of your circle, and hold it out here, let me 
this is a small little piece, so it's wanting to flap around a little bit. It's a little bit easier, actually, with the bigger piece of rug padding. So you can hold your string right at your center, and if you hold your marker out as far as you want it to go, then you can, and again, this keeps trying to wrinkle up on me, then you can draw a circle out from that center point, like so. Again, a little fiddly, and it helps if you have someone else there with you, especially on the big pad, to help hold your edges. But just gently work your way around, hold the string taut. If you hold it the same distance there, it should give you a nice gentle curve for your circle. And you just mark it with the Sharpie. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be perfect because most of this is gonna be covered up with the pom-poms, but this will give you that general shape. At this point, I also like to mark that center. Again, all this is gonna get covered up with the yarn, so don't worry too much about it. And that tells me where the center will be so I can start crocheting. Get the lid back on my marker here. And then with a pair of scissors, if I fix my fold a little bit there, there we go, I can just cut right along that curve I made. And you want to use, you know, a nice big pair of scissors for these, not your fabric scissors, not your best scissors, just a regular old pair of household scissors to cut the rug pad. And then hopefully when I unfold this, yay, we've got a circle. It's not a totally perfect circle, but it's good enough to make our rug on and put a little edge around, and I can always trim that off a little bit more if I need to, but that is basically how I made my initial circle. And then of course I had my center marked so I could start working my stitches. So let's go ahead and do that together on our little tiny circle. Okay, so with our rug pad prepared, we're ready to actually begin our stitching. One thing with Red Heart Pompadoodle, I would not recommend trying to find the end on the inside. Just go ahead and find the end on the outside of the skein to start working. So what you wanna do is ignore this little bit of string here. In fact, if you wanted to, you could tie that off or cut it off, but you want to begin with the string that's between the first two pom-poms. Then what we're gonna do, and it doesn't matter from which side of the rug pad I do this. Again, it's a rug, it's all gonna be covered up in the end. I wanna put my hook through the hole closest to that mark, that center mark. Doesn't really matter, I could do this one, this one. Again, this is not an exact science. So I'm gonna put my hook right through that hole. And if you don't find this particular type of rug padding, you just wanna use whatever size hook will fit through the holes of your rug pad nicely. Then I'm going to yarn over with that first string in between those first two pom-poms and just go ahead and pull it right through that hole. And I want to go ahead and give it a nice tug because I want that very first pom-pom, the one here on the end, I want it right up against this fabric. So I can pull down on that second pom-pom. You can see it's a little fiddly. I just flip back and forth, pull down on that second pom-pom and it'll pull that first one right up nice and tight against the rug padding. Then to secure it, I'm just going to find whatever hole looks convenient, whatever's next to it. I'm gonna yarn over with that string one more time and pull it through to the back there, and then just pull it right through that loop. And sometimes it helps to use the other hand. It's just a slip stitch, but that's, that's it. Pull it through and pull that one down. And then you want to keep working your way around the pad, just pulling through. Now, the spacing of this can take a little bit of experimentation, and that was what took me the longest. Tying down this first one like this is fine. Then I'd go into the next hole and probably put one more stitch pull that, that string through one more time. Oops, there we go. Like I say, it's a little fiddly, but it's once you get going, it's pretty quick. There we go. Pull that through and pull that loop through. And we're just gonna keep working that way. I found I got about two slip stitches for each string section. So that should help you plan too. But after you've made your first couple here, I find after, when I'm ready to switch to the next string section, for this particular type of rug padding, it was good to skip a hole. So maybe where I would, would have gone into this one next, I can go around here. You can see I'm starting to kind of make a curve. So I will jump over a little bit and then take this next string section and pull it up and through and make sure that first, that next pom-pom, the second one, there is pulled down nice and tight since I'm on that second string section. And then the second time I go into that string section, I like to just go over one hole. Again, it's kind of a matter of experimentation. If you don't find this exact rug pad or um, you know, you've know you gone with a different shape, you just really play with it. And it's essentially surface crochet is what we're doing. Normally when you work surface crochet, this is the surface, the side that you can see, but we're 
going to be showing off the underside this time. So if you're familiar with surface crochet, then you're probably familiar with this technique. But you just want to keep working your way around the pad. And if you find that, um, you know, you've left too big of a gap between your rows of pom-poms or something, you could probably go back and fill that in if it's really wide. Or despite the little bit of a struggle it looks like when you're doing this, it's not as hard when you're doing it. Um, you know, when you're just doing it, it looks it looks stiff, but it's really not that difficult to pull it through. So if you mess up, if you find that your pom-poms are too far apart, it's actually very easy to frog these. You just pull from the side and they come right back out of the pad. So very simple. Like I said, it's just a matter of slip stitching. Um, there's not really a pattern so much as just making the shape that you want your rug to be. I started in the center and worked in a spiral because I was making a circle. If I were making uh, more of a rectangle shape, I could start in one corner and work back and forth in rows, however you like to do it. Like I said, the big thing is just to kind of keep those rows about an inch or so apart so that you get the pom-poms laying up next to each other really nicely and you don't see the string. So the tricky part to this, besides just getting the yarn started, is when you need to switch balls when you've run out of one ball of pompadoodle and you want to add the next. So let me go ahead and demo that for you now. Okay, so of course you're going to get a lot further on your rug before you need to add another ball of yarn. But just for the sake of demo here, I went ahead and cut this one right here. So let's pretend this is the end of our first or second or third or fourth ball of pompadoodle and we're ready to add another one. What I'm going to do is pull up that last loop in between the last two palms of the first skein. I don't want to try and deal with this one right now. I just want the string in between two palms. So I'm going to pull that loop up nice and high and put that down for a minute and find the loop between the first two palms of the next one. Easy, right? So then, and if you need to, while you put this down, you can put a stitch marker in it just to keep it safe. But when you're ready to add your next uh, skein of pompadoodle, it's okay, have that on the hook. Go into the next hole wherever you want that next pom-pom to start being attached and start it the same way you would the other one. Just pull it through to the back, just like when you began the first one, and there it went, it wanted to go on its own. Pull it right on through the last loop of the previous one. You pull that down nice and tight again, right up against, just like you did with the first one, and just go into the next loop and continue crocheting with that new ball. Again, a little fiddly, getting it started here. There we go, pull that one through, oops. There we go, and there we go. So, and there we have the second one is attached. Now, what do you do with these little guys here at the end? You have a couple options. You can cut them off, or I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off and say we're done with this skein already. There we are. Now, when you get to the very, very end and you've got your last pom-pom, you've worked all the way out to the edge, and you want to go ahead and finish off crocheting with this stuff, what do you do? Well, like I say, I've got my loop right here. I'm gonna go ahead and secure this one, pretending this is the last loop of our whole rug. I'm gonna secure it with a stitch marker while I deal with the front. Then, like I said, I want to have one string left without a pom-pom attached to the end. This is the end that I'm going to use to secure the whole rug with. So if you are working right up to the end of your last skein, just cut off that very last pom-pom so you've got one nice long string to weave in with. Then you're going to need probably about your biggest yarn needle. I don't even know what brand this is. This is just one I had in my stash, but it's a nice big plastic yarn needle. So I'm going to thread the string on there and then wherever I just want to tack that final pom-pom down, that's where I'm going to just send it right on through to the back of the rug pad. Pull it down nice and tight so that it's up against the rug pad again. And then I can take that string, send it through that last loop that we made, like so here, and just pull that on through. Go ahead and get rid of that stitch marker now. It's out of the way. And then we need to weave this in. Now, obviously this is a very small string. Normally when I do a video, I'm always telling you leave at least six inches to weave in. Well, we don't have six inches here and we don't wanna try and weave a pom-pom in on the back of our rug. That would be a lumpy rug. So we're going to use once again, this non-slip map to our advantage. When we weave in our ends, I will go through both underneath the stitch and I'm going to go up underneath. It's hard to see a little bit here. So if we can 
pull it out so you can see. I'm going to go into the rug padding a little bit too. And when I do this, it's very normal for the string to want to fall out of the needle because it is so short. I can just slip it right back in there right before I pull it through. And again, this is a little bit of strength. You need some hand strength sort of for this project more than you normally do when you crochet. There we are. But you just pull it through and between the stitches and the non-slip pad, I found that the ends stuck really well. That said, I also didn't trim them off short. After doing a few of these end weaving in maneuvers here, I just left the rest of the length hanging out on the back of the rug. Um, when it does get short, you can obviously weave the needle in first and then put the string through the eye of the needle, whatever you need to do to keep weaving it in. But I wouldn't trim these off at all. I would just, like I say, if you get, if you think they're woven in enough, I would just go ahead and leave those ends hanging out on the back of your rug. When it's face down, it's not gonna cause any problems at all. You know, it's not gonna cause the non-slip to not work or anything like that. Um, and if you really, really, really felt that they needed more securing, um, if it was in high traffic area, I would go ahead and add a dab of glue. You could use something like Aline's Tacky Glue, Hot Glue. Um, I've used both of those with the Pompadoodle. I would just be cautious um, with your rug pad. It may melt a little bit if you use hot glue. So you may want to use a low temp one. Um, I just haven't used hot glue on these rug pads before to find out how well they handle it. So whatever, you know, E6000, there's probably lots of glues that would work well just to tack that last end down if you wanted to secure it even more. But I can show you how I handled the ends on my rug and so far, so good. Okay, so here you can see the back of the original rug again. You can see I've got one end from one skein here and another end here, and I've just woven them in really securely. They don't seem to be going anywhere at all, but I'm not going to trim them off any shorter and encourage them to either. I think when this is flipped upside down and all these nonstick bits are up against our hard surface floor that will help keep them in place as well you can see here too just one more time i want to point out that they're just about an inch maybe a little bit over apart they're not perfect this was all done by sight um, i wasn't measuring as i went this was just an eyeball measurement but it worked it worked very simply so the only thing i haven't demonstrated is this final edging so let's go ahead and work that together now Okay, so now this is where our Super Saver Ombre comes in. And like I said, this part's optional, but I think it gives a really nice finished edge to our rug. So when you've worked your pom-poms all the way out to about an inch or so from that finished edge, I would say stay at least half an inch in at least before you um, finish off work with your pom-poms or before you wanna cut that off anymore. You just wanna leave a little bit. These things are pretty secure, but over time, of course, they can rip and tear and you just don't want to start losing your pom-poms off the edge of your rug. So to secure those edges a little bit firmly still, we're going to work a single crochet edging around it. Now I could go in as this far, I could go in here, I could roll the edge if I wanted to and crochet over that. And what you are going to do, again, just depends on your rug and what sort of edges you've come up with and what shape you've used. Um, but you can really just, you wanna make sure that you're at least one row in if the edges, let me get my hand behind it, if this edge seems real insecure right here. I wouldn't crochet into this one. I'd come down to this one or maybe here. Again, this is mostly not going to show. This is just in case a little bit of this rug peeps out. So I would go ahead and just join to wherever, wherever you like along the edge and start working single crochets right along that edge. If you're working a curve or a corner, you might need to add an extra stitch to get around. But wherever looks like a good place to stick your hook is fine. This is not the star of the show. It's just a little bit of edging. So wherever you wanna put those stitches is fine. And I just went ahead and crunched up these edges here. I didn't worry about rolling them over particularly or anything like that. Um, again, if you wanted a thicker edge to your rug, you could purposefully roll it and crochet over that whole edging if you like. It's really just a matter of securing down those edges of the rug pads. So they don't come undone or let's see that one's that one's a little close I'm gonna come down here and whatever sort of edging you think looks best this is really not there's no stitch counts to worry about here or anything like that it's just a matter of getting sort of a nice laying edge and then after I made that single crochet edging around my rug any of those little bits that did stick out quite a bit like that that I didn't like I just went ahead and trimmed those right off being careful of course not to cut the yarn 
but that's really all there is to it. And the great thing about using this rug pad, like I said, is that it makes it non-slip direct, directly off the hook. Even though you've covered up some of the rug pad with your stitches, when you lay it down, there's enough in between the rows, that inch that shows in between each, when somebody steps on it, it really doesn't move. So that's how I made the super easy non-slip pom-pom rug. Again, you'll find a link in the description here on YouTube, uh, or if you're already on the blog, it's right below. You'll find links to everything you need, the written pattern and all the supplies you need to make this pattern. So I hope you'll check it out. If you like this video, do give it a like. Let us know what you think in the comments. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.